Today I'm going to talk about a technique that helps you to read a pattern. Many of you I know struggle with reading a pattern and working out where the dots belong to which part of the pattern. And Barbara Underwood always used to teach us to colour in the patterns, particularly with Bedfordshire where you have a lot of cloth stitch trails and other items uh, that you needed to define. And what she taught us to do was to colour in the pattern like this on your pricking card. So that you can then see straight away what areas need to be cloth stitch and what areas need to be half stitch. Now this technique would actually work for any lace that has areas of cloth stitch, trails, anything like that. It would work for Russian, it would work for Bucks Point where you have motifs in ground and many other laces just to help you define the areas. So what I've done, I've coloured in in green this olive green colour, all of the areas of cloth stitch. Anything that I want reminding is half stitch or a different stitch, like here and here, these little spots, I've coloured them in in a bronzy brown tan colour to remind me that these are actually worked in half stitch. Now the pens that I use are artist quality, they want to be artist quality to be waterproof, even though they actually say they are water based, they are water resistant and they're brush pens. So they actually have quite a thick end which is quite soft and colours in and it also if you've got a fine area of trail has a, a pointed end like a normal felt pen. I tend to use an olive green and these are the ones that I favour these days although there are other makes available. The bronzy ones I've got, this is another make and again it is a double ender pen but please go for the artist quality ones, the children's ones are not waterproof and again another, another make. So I have these colours and they are slightly different shades. I tend to use the Tombow 076 for most of the cloth stitch and I have gone for this one and this one's a very old pen it's, it's been with me for many years now because I don't tend to use it for a lot for half stitch don't tend to do patterns with a lot of half stitch in so it doesn't get used a lot and they do last a long while it is worth paying the extra for the artist quality ones you need to find one that is a permanent pen, permanent marker because otherwise you have the potential for it to come off on your lace when you're actually working it. So what do we do? Going back to the pattern, I'll just show you a little bit of this. So we pick the colour we're going to do. Now what you can do also, if you're not quite sure on the colour, turn your pattern over to the back and just test them on the back of it, just a little colour to see how they look. See if you can see them. You can do a little area and put your threads over the top to check that you're going to be able to see the threads over it because much depends on what colour thread you're going to be using as well so you can see there you've got the four colours I've got and they are they all work on this this uh, buff coloured card, the pricking card and they help me see it what you don't want to do is to use a very vibrant colour I would advise against red personally I can't work with red but you want a colour that is calming to your eyes. You don't want something that is too loud and you don't want something that's too dark. You want something that's quite restful but one that you can actually see enough to be able to work with. So I'm going to start off and I'll look at this pattern and straight away you can see in the flower you've got a lot of ground. Now I know because I designed this pattern what happens and it sometimes helps you if you actually colour in a photocopy, if you get a pattern you don't know what it looks like, you colour it in just inside the pinholes and it helps you actually visualise what the cloth stitch areas will be like. And it doesn't take a lot to colour it in. If you do this on the photocopy before you start, before you actually go to the trouble of pricking it, sometimes it will help you make the decision as well if you actually want to work a pattern. I have occasionally 
looked at the pattern and thought it looks absolutely fantastic. But once I've done this, I thought, no, don't want to work that. And it saves you an awful lot of time if you do this before you commit to working a pattern, before you wind your bobbins, prepare the pattern, and it helps you visualise what the pattern will actually look like when it's worked. Now straight away there you can see what that cloth stitch is going to look like when you've actually worked it. Now again, there's half stitch in there, so I just put a little spot in and then the half stitch ones. And that will again help me visualise what the pattern's going to be. It also helps, I can see here, where the points are going to go down to. So you're not trying to work out when you've got a lot of pairs on your pillow which pinholes belong to which. You can straight away see which belongs to where. Here I can see I've got a nice round spot. So I colour that spot in. I can see it's got a trail going over here. So I colour that in. And I can see that trail. It's a little bit difficult to do this on camera to try and keep my hand out of your way. So it might not be as neat as I would like it to be. I can see this comes down to a point. So I take that down to the point. And while you're doing this, your brain is actually starting to work out how you would work this pattern. Now here I have a join. But knowing with Bedfordshire you want a space, I'm not going to take the join right up to that dot because I know that will have two little plaits across to do the join. Now you're seeing the design come to life. I will just do this little flower above it so you can see that as well. Let's put the spots in that half stitch in there. And I recommend doing this with patterns, with all patterns really, that have got cloth stitch trails or any areas of cloth stitching. Again here I've got a little trail. Now I know I want a little space. Little plaits come across to make the join. Now here, on the petals, I've got ground in the middle so that's got to be open. So this has got to be a trail around the outside. And I've got a circle that goes around the middle. This isn't very neat. I'm sure you can all do a much better job of it off camera than I'm doing on camera. I'm hoping just to give you the idea. Now sometimes it does pay you to turn it around so you colour it in. And I'm doing this to keep my hand out of the camera's view. A little bit. And it just makes it more comfortable for colouring in as well. You're not trying to distort your hand into contortions. And of course if you do it on your copy first, your paper copy, you've got this for reference when you're working it and you can then copy it onto your pricken and you don't colour in the wrong bit until you get confident with colouring them in. Now I love this technique because it really does help you see the pattern. I've recently been working some continental laces which don't tend to have the same sort of system of working and I haven't coloured them in and it's much much more difficult. So there you can see the flower, albeit a little bit ski whiffed in places. And I've got a stalk coming down here to that bit and I've got another leaf here. And then I've just got a few spots of half stitch. And there you've got just about one pattern repeat coloured in. And that helps you see the pattern. Now at that you might think, no, I really don't want to work all that point ground in there. I don't like this design. And you've wasted only a few minutes colouring it in to discover that without wasting time doing a prick in, doing all of the prick in like this one. It's going to be a, an edging, so that's a lot of pricking. And also working out how you're going to work the corners, which I'll talk about in a moment. 
that can save you a lot of time especially if you prick the pattern you haven't coloured it in you then wind all the bobbins and this takes a lot of pairs you feel quite committed to it and even if you don't like it you feel you're obliged to work it this can help you make that decision now one thing that a lot of lace makers ask me is how to join up patterns now for an edging you only need two pieces of pattern this one you could actually have the corner and then a length that goes between corners but what I've done on here I've actually pricked albeit laser pricked two corners and I then join them up and you see here I've got a tiny bit of an overlap on that spot and I've staggered the join like this I've made the join not a straight line across so that when you actually come to put it on your pillow it locks into place and you don't have the problems quite so much lining it up then what you have to do is you will be working down this side work to here work onto the card hopefully you're on a block pillow or a big enough pillow to take it so imagine turning your pillow to go around this corner you work completely onto here you would lift this card off and having also made the other side join up just move the card to be able to work straight onto it I hope that's helped you with a little bit of pattern reading and tips to actually get your pattern to a workable stage and also you don't need to prick a whole square of edging if you're doing a whole one you can actually prick just a corner and a length on this one I could have just pricked that amount and then I could have just pricked to here and that would work just as well if you're actually doing the pricking yourself I say this is a laser cut one it's from the Heritage Lace Designs book and they're all available through my website it does make your pricking a lot easier when you've got it done for you and it's accurate as well particularly on point ground which is quite tricky to get accurate so I hope that's helped you with your patterns today give me a thumbs up a subscribe which is free and you'll be notified of new patterns coming soon I know I haven't re released a lot just lately it's been a very difficult year but I'm hoping to get back into a routine and get them coming out more more frequently if you've any ideas of things you want to see please let me know and I'll do my best to help you thanks for watching